playing the uh, electrical system today, or at least I'm going to work on the electrical system. Um, I'm not professional at this. Um, this is just the way I'm going to do it, and you can see if it's going to go right or wrong. Um, so I don't recommend trying it yourself, but if you can get some tips from this, that's great. But um, like I said, I'm not a professional at this. Um, I'll go over the components that I've got here. First of all, we get a, uh, a power converter, and what this does, it'll enable me to uh, supply a 12 volt DC uh, voltage when I plug into shore power or from a battery bank, and it'll also uh, distribute uh, 110 current. So I've got 12 volt and 110 coming out of this when I'm plugged into shore power, and this will also charge my uh, 12 volt batteries. This side over here with the fuses is uh, fused for the uh, 12 volt side of the circuits, and this over here is for the uh, 110 amp circuits. This is like the house cold current, and this is like the um, automotive 12 volt current. And um, the uh, battery charger, it's a, uh, I think it's a 40 amp battery charger, is uh, is built into this unit. Um, here's the cable I'm going to use to uh, run the shore power. I've got a a Furon 30 amp plug on it, and here's the input receptacle that I'm going to use. Um, I got this off of uh, I think eBay for like 20, 25 bucks or something. Um, this will plug right into uh, right into this. It's hard to do it with one hand, so I'm holding the camera. But I'll show you later once I get everything and where I'm going to put it. Um, I'm also going to use this uh, 30 amp adapter, this will plug in to my cable. When I'm not plugged into shore power, I can use this to plug into my generator and use my generator to power the, uh, the whole RV. I'll show you how all that's going to work. Um, here's a, another Craigslist find. It's a uh, Xantrix uh, Pro Watt. It's a uh, 1000 watt sine wave inverter. Um, the, I'm going to use this when I'm running strictly off of uh, my battery bank. Which I don't plan on using too much because I want most all of my devices in here to be 12 volt and uh, low power consumption. I'm going to try to keep it that way as much as possible. So this might be used, like my son, he might want to bring his PS3, PS4 gaming system. We'll have to have something like that in there. Uh, my 12, my refrigerator, if I put one in here, it's probably going to be a 12 volt. So uh, that'll run off my battery bank, which will... Uh, run off of one of these circuits over here and I'll have lights, uh, you know, 12 volt light circuits. Um, so anyway, I don't plan on using a lot of 110 amp, um, 110 amp, 110 volt circuits. So, um, anyway, that's the plan so far. And of course, the, uh, the generator is going to be mounted up here. And I've got a cable run. This is, uh, this is the same cable I used to, uh, I think I used it for a well or running an underground circuit back to my shed and I had some leftover wire. So that, that cable is, uh, it's, I think it's UF and it's uh, 10 gauge. So that's more than enough for, or adequate for 30 amp service, which is what my RV is going to be, 30 amp. I've got that run under the ground back to the shed back there. So that should be, you know, more than adequate to, uh, to run through here. I've got a little... Uh, grommet here to pr protect the cable from getting cut you know when it is bent I've got it running back down through this side and I think I'm going to end up mounting a panel right here and putting my uh, power uh, uh, panel right there and I've got this little box from the, the scrap yard this little stainless steel box is just sitting in a pile I don't know you know how it got there the whole story about it but I drill a hole in it and put my little um, power receptacle right on it and the plan is is to mount the power receptacle right here inside of my box so I can use my cable right here to plug into the power receptacle when, when it's mounted and then I can plug in the shore power and power the entire um, RV and when I'm not plugged into shore power I can take this little adapter right here, make sure I have it lined up correctly, plug it into my uh, generator, and then go directly into there, and that's a, uh, I 
think it's a uh, 30 amp circuit. It says 20 amp right here, but I think that side is 30. I'm not positive. But that'll be uh, enough to power the system. Um, so it'll we'll either get power from the generator or power from shore power. We'll see how that works. But that's the plan anyway. So um, time to get to work. Oh, I forgot to mention, the, uh, here's the plan for the, the battery bank. These are uh, Group 31 batteries. These are uh, wet cell, and I would really like to go AGM. I, I got these. They do hold power, and they work, so they'd be great for testing. I'm gonna, I plan on running two of those. I think they're 100 and, 105, 110 amp hours a piece, so they're good for about half that. So um, I'm going to tie two of them together. They're 12 volt, not 6 volt, by the way, so uh, I'll have to run them, I guess, in parallel. Yeah, in parallel. Um, anyway, it's a little too early for to, to be working on the, this stuff, but... Uh, Got to work on it when uh, when you have the time to do it. Anyway, that's the plan for that. And I this tray <laughs> pulled out of the scrapyard again. Just happens to fit that Group 31. It's it's a little tight. It might be squeezing it on the sides, but it it'll definitely hold it secure. Maybe I can put some kind of rollers or something so I can slide these in and out. But uh, I think that's where everything's going to go. The batteries on this side, power panel on this side, power receptacle up here, generator on this side plan is to cut um, a hole in the back side here to exhaust the generator out this this side right here and I have to figure out how this thing needs airflow to make sure it, it gets enough airflow but I'm gonna um, it definitely has to be exhausted out the back side that's where the exhaust comes out and I'm gonna put some kind of a baffle I, I saw in another YouTube channel a guy did it and um, I'll share that link um, but he uh, he made a little baffle box that stuck out and used the same generator and the same type of box they built a little uh, a baffle over it that really made it quiet. So uh, I'll include that uh, that link in my description so you guys can check it out. All right, now it's time to get to work.
All right, so we have the AC wire wiring hooked up. We, everything looks right. Took all the fuses out of the uh, DC side, so they won't get any shorts. I'm gonna test out and see if the air conditioning is gonna work off of shore power. So, hopefully, this is gonna work. Household uh, current. Let's see, everything's off. So, moment of truth here. Alright, so far, so good. No flames, sparks. I should turn the AC on. No. Man, I'll be glad when I get some steps. Okay. We have. Oh, well, no, that's off. On. Set. No power up here. Drawing board. Okay, so I got everything all wired up, flipped the switch, and nothing happened. And uh, I found out what my problem is. This thing right here, of course, I got it off eBay for 20 bucks, 25 bucks, or something like that, made by Furon. It's a piece of junk. The, uh, the connectors back here, no matter how hard I wrench down on them, they won't hold the wire in, whether it's uh, braided wire or whether it's, uh, you know, solid copper wire. It just does not grip. It's uh, a very, very loose grip, and I've wrenched down on them, as, you know, as tight as they would go. So, I, uh, I guess I'm going to do away with my little fancy setup here, because I'd rather have something that's, uh, that's safer and more secure. But... I do not recommend this at all. It's a, a poor connection if in, at best. Time for the uh, smoke test. See if the magic smoke comes off. So far, so good on that. Step two. That's more like it, 100, 120 volts. So, that should power my circuit. Nothing. Ha, that's what it was, I had it. Had to reset it. 
There we go. That's the way things are supposed to work. Frustrating. All because of one crummy connector. I'll stay away from that product from now on, that's for sure. Much better anyway. Made some progress. up a little bit. I'm going to put a connector, uh, a bracket, so that if I accidentally drive away or something with this thing connected, that it will kind of hold the cable. Or if somebody tugs on it or something to prevent it from coming loose up here. Not as pretty as the other setup, but hey, this one works a heck of a lot better. <laughs> 